All right, so we have a couple of things to finish up in our chapter. Okay. I want to finish up D2 reactions today. Okay. So last time we looked at the mechanism of them. Okay. But here we want to look at one other property of them. Here we have two different substrates and our base OH minus. Okay. Remember in the E2 reaction, what does the base attack? The beta hydrogen. Okay. What's the difference in both reactions. Okay. Here they're what? Beta hydrogen leaving group are on the same side. Here they are on opposite sides. Okay, so that's one observation. Another observation, which maybe you're not picking up, <laughs> is that these atoms here are in the same plane. And so if they're in the same plane, we say that they are co-paraplanar. Okay, so that's what that big word means. That the beta hydrogen and the chlorine, the leaving group, are in the same plane. That's one thing that's needed to occur for E2 reactions. You might say, why do they need to be in the same plane? Okay? The reason is that, remember, you're going to form a double bond or a pi bond. And that pi bond is made up of p orbitals, and those p orbitals have to overlap. Okay? So they have to be in the same plane to overlap. Okay? So if I have two p orbitals, like these two pins, they're in the same plane, they can overlap. If they're not in the same plane, like something like this, then they can't overlap. So that's the reason for paraplanar geometry. Okay? So that's the first thing to take away from that. What's the second thing? Well, again, over here, beta hydrogen leaving group are on what the same side of the carbon atoms. Here they are on opposite sides. Okay? If they are on the same side, we say that they are sin to each other. Sin for same. And if they are on opposite side, we say they are 
anti to each other. Okay? So here you have what's called sin coparaplanar geometry, and here you have anti coparaplanar geometry. Okay? My question to you is which one do you think E2 likes? The sin or the anti? The sin. That's what the other group said too. <laughs> and they were wrong. So I have to, hate to tell you, you're wrong as well. Why do you think the anti is better? Because the state is strain. Yeah, yeah, here they're on the same side, a little bit more crowded. Here I get rid of the steric strain. It's an easier attack there. Okay? So anti, write it down, is always the best for E2 reactions. Okay? And that's what we're going to use. So with that theory in mind, let's go ahead and use it in an example. <coughs> and let's use it in this example here. Substitution reaction, very simple, OH would substitute for CL. But here, I want the elimination product. And what would the elimination product be? Well, you got beta hydrogens on this side and on this side, okay? So the OH minus could attack either side and put the double bond on either side of the leaving group. Okay. So I could put the double bond here or here. It's the same thing. Okay. You just flip the molecule and you would get that one. Okay. You say, well, I don't see any big deal about that. We've kind of already learned that. Okay. Well, let's take a look at it in more detail by going back to chapter three and looking at the chair confirmation for cyclohexanes. Okay. So with the chair confirmation, Remember, we have these axial and equatorial bonds. Okay. Where do I want to put on my groups here? Okay. Well, if you look, I want, remember, anti coparaplanar geometry. So my leaving group would be best put on here in an axial. And to get anti would have my beta hydrogen here. See that? So that the anti, and look, they're in the same plane. So I always want my leaving group axial and beta hydrogen axial.
so with that being the case, form our pi bond there. Okay. So this here is the same thing as either one of these. I'm just showing either one of these in a three-dimensional chair conformation. Okay. Do you follow that? Okay. So any questions on how the setup has to be? Okay. You say, well, what's the big deal about that? Okay. Thanks for telling me, but that's how I get this product. What's the big deal? Well, let's look at the big deal by doing another example. Which of these two would you predict to form? What kind of double bond is this? The di substituted or what is that? Tri substituted. And this one here is di substituted. So this should be the more stable double bond. And so this one here follows Zaitsev's rule, and so we would call that maybe the Zaitsev product. Okay. The only thing that's um, being eliminated on E2 is the hydrogen. Right. So if the A attack occurs, it's attacking that hydrogen. The B attack occurs, it's attacking that hydrogen. So we want to figure out which of the two is attacking the most. We would predict A because it's the more stable double bond. But how are we going to figure out? Going back to the chair. So let's go back to the squeaky chair. Okay. So let's put on our groups. Okay. So let's focus in on where the chlorine is. Remember, I always want that chlorine to be axial. 
Okay. And I note I'm dealing with a trans setup, so that's top. Where am I going to put the CH3 over here? On either top. Top or bottom? The trans bottom. Bottom. CH3 is trans, so I have to put it down there. I don't want to put it there, but I got to put it there. <coughs> so now is this hydrogen axial? No, it's equatorial. So can it be attacked? It cannot be attacked because it has to be axial. That has to be axial, and that has to be axial. If I did a ring flip, then we get that axial, but then that would become equatorial. Okay? So that cannot be attacked. Okay, it's not axial. Okay, so this beta hydrogen cannot be attacked. So what beta hydrogen can be attacked? Over here, these ones that I'm not showing. Okay, so now that beta hydrogen is axial. So now that is the only one available for the OH to attack. minus will attack that one and not that one. I have a question. Yeah. So if it was written like that, you would want us to show the hydrogen or show which base it's acting? Right. Okay. So which will be the major product? A or B? B. In fact, can A even form? No. No, A can't even form. That's not even going to be a minor product. Can, can it not switch the methyl and the hydrogen like it did at the other when it was attacking? Uh, yeah, it can't change bonds. I can do a ring flip to make that axial here, but then that becomes equatorial. So you get stuck both ways. Okay. So, so this will be the only product that forms, and this one here we call the anti zaysen Okay. Any questions on that there? So when you're doing this to act up, the only way you can really find out which one is mostly you do have to do the chair? Right. Right. Or I'll give you a shortcut after all this is done. <laughs> How's that? Okay. Shortcuts only count when you've done something the hard way, right? But I won't give you the shortcut yet. Um. So just looking at the um the beginning, the cycle hey, plan at the top. If you look at the way it's set up, and I'm just trying to see if there's any um. You know, correlation with this, we have our H, our um, beta hydrogen going off to the side here. No, there, the A one. 
like we said B was the actual fact. Right. So yeah, we're saying looking at this, you would just predict, okay, to tax that hydrogen, double bond, and that leaves. But this is where we're going to the three-dimensional molecule to be able to see why this one, which is A, that can't be attacked. Okay. So it's kind of a neat analysis. Just a big one Yeah. Thank you. Let's look at another example. make this more clear. <coughs> this time, let's do the cis isomer. Okay. So with the cis Isomer. Again, I could look at possibly forming both products. So there are my <laughs> A and B beta hydrogens. So now let's look at the chair for this. Okay. So here, chlorine, again, I want leaving group on axial. That's absolutely mandatory. Again, that will be on the top. Then I come next door. CH3 is this time cis to the chlorine. So it's going to go on top. And now when I put that on top, look where that beta hydrogen is. Axial, yes, now I can attack. Okay. So now, can be attacked. Axial. Okay. So now which product will be the major product? A will be, because now the Zaitsev product can form. Okay. B will form too, but to a smaller amount. So that will be the minor product this time. Okay, because you still got these beta hydrogens over here. But now the driving force will be the more substituted double bond, so the Zaitsev can form. The only time you like that problem be like A will be able to form if, if it's a cis. You just figured out the shortcut. Yeah. <laughs> Now, don't you appreciate that? <laughs> yeah. If I would have told you to begin with, you wouldn't have appreciated it. Okay? Just like if I gave you a $100 bill, if I just gave it to you, I wouldn't really appreciate it that much. But if you did some work for me, and I gave you the $100, and then you'd appreciate it. And you'd spend it more wisely. Wouldn't waste it. <laughs> what waste? Shit or something. 
put in your savings account. Okay. You want to waste it, would you? Would you waste it? All right, so any questions here? So you're right. If these two groups are cis, the zaitsef will be the major product. If these two are trans, then the non zaitsef will be the major product. Okay? But now you see why. Major or only. Or, yeah, or only. Okay, so the supreme major, okay, <laughs> the only one. Okay, let's look at one more example of this kind of Zaitsev and non Zaitsev stuff by looking at this reaction. And on this molecule, I'm looking at two sets of beta hydrogens. Okay, or I can call this A and this B. If the A beta hydrogens attacked, we'll get this product. If the B beta hydrogens attacked, classify that base. A bulky base. BB. Bulky base. As soon as you see a bulky base, that should make you think of sterics. Okay. Ease of attack. Question. Which is easier for this to attack, A or B? Which is sticking out? A. The A. Okay. So the A will be easier attack. Okay. Less sterics. So which product will be the major product? A. Which is the non zaitsev product. Okay, so here's another way to get the non or the anti zaitsev product by using a bulky base, which attacks the easier 
hydrogen to attack. This one has more crowding in here. Any questions on that? Okay. That's all I want to cover today is the effect of the bulky base and the cyclohexane ring, where you have to have them axial. Okay. All right, well, let's go ahead and close here for today.